Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at building this 41 decibel switched attenuator from Pacific Antennas. I got a fox hunt coming up in about a week or so and I've had this kit for about six months so it's time to put this together and put it to use for the fox hunt. The other reason I want to get this built is I misplaced my other attenuator. I'm not sure where it is and I'm going to need one for this fox hunt so let's get this one put together. So first up I'll get this thing out of the plastic and we'll see what we're dealing with here. So the kit consists of a printed circuit board here. It looks like a pretty decent quality board with sort of bluish solder mask on there. We've got a couple of printed circuit board mounted BNC connectors. We've got a bag full of buttons with little button covers on them. A bag full of resistors. And it looks like we need to go to the qrpkits.com website to download the assembly manual. Now that I have the manual up, the first thing to do with building this kit, or really any kit, is to get the parts laid out and inventoried to make sure we have everything we need. So the first thing that I'm going to do is start to inventory all these resistors and kind of double check their values. I've grabbed the first one, which is supposed to be a 6.2 ohm resistor. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but the color code on here is blue, red, gold, gold which indicates 6.2 ohms plus or minus 5% tolerance. So I'll just use these pliers to kind of put a nice bend on these leads here. So now what I'll do is use my component tester to double check the value. So you can see that this resistor is measuring 4.48 ohms, which is actually a little bit low. I don't have another one in stock, so we're going to use this one anyway. Should be close enough for what we're doing here. So with a lot of kits, what I normally would do is take all of the parts and inventory them in a tray or maybe an egg carton or use a piece of foam or something like that to kind of organize them until I'm ready to insert them in the board. But in this case, you can see I've brought my circuit board vise over and I've got the board mounted in it. So what I think I'll do instead though is just put these in the board as I go along. Now this happens to be R1, so we'll put this in the R1 position. So once I get that seated down on the board, I'll just bend the leads on the back side out a little bit so the part can't fall out. So now what I'll do is just continue on with the rest of the resistors until I get the board populated. So as you can see, I've got all the resistors loaded in. What I'm going to do now is flip this over and solder these leads on. As you can see, I've got all the resistors soldered in. Now, actually had a little trouble soldering these in. The leads on some of these resistors were just barely fitting into the hole. Now normally on a board like this you want a little bit of a gap between the lead and the side of the plated through holes so that the solder wets and wicks through the hole, but these fit so tight I had a little trouble getting the solder to kind of wet, so I ended up using a little flux on here and that seemed to help. The other problem with this board is that some of these resistors connect directly to sort of this copper plane that's here and when they designed the board they didn't put any thermal reliefs on those connections so I had to add a little extra heat on those connections to make the solder flow but once I got that worked out everything seemed okay. I'm not going to win any IPC soldering awards but I think this will be good enough for amateur radio use. So next up I'm going to get these switches mounted and soldered into the board. They all appear to be the same switch and it doesn't look like there's any kind of polarity on these. They can go in either way they fit. So just like I did with the resistors, I'm going to mount all of the switches first. And then I'm going to flip the board over and bend over the opposite corner leads so the switches stay mounted to the board until I solder the leads. And this time it looks like the holes are plenty big enough so we shouldn't need any flux to solder these in. Now that I have all the switches soldered in, the last thing to solder in are the BNC connectors. I don't have a proper project box or anything to really mount this on. So what I found was a piece of scrap wood laying around, some screws that'll fit through those holes. And, well, I don't know what these are, but I found them in my miscellaneous hardware drawer, but they'll work as standoffs. So I should be able to just mount this to this board, at least until I can find a better 
project box or something to mount this in. So I've got the attenuator mounted to the board here. It's not pretty, but it should be functional. The last thing I'll do is put these little button caps on the buttons and then we'll test this thing out. So I've got the attenuator ready to go. So over on this side, I've got an antenna connected up. The antenna is a two meter vertical that's mounted up on my garage roof. And then over here on this side, I'm connected up to my old Alinko DJ1GHT. This is the radio that I normally use for fox hunting, so I figured I'd start testing with this and see how it worked. Right now, it's Christmas Day, so there's not too much activity on the 2-meter band, but I've tuned into the local NOAA weather frequency, and I figured we could start there. So I've got the volume turned all the way down, but this particular NOAA weather station is only a few miles away, and right now is coming in full scale. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that this button is depressed. When it's in the out position, the attenuator is bypassed. When I push it in, it turns the attenuator on. Now right now I don't have any of the stages enacted, so we're getting more or less full signal through to the radio. But now if I start turning stages on, you should start to see the signal drop. So I'm going to start off first and turn on the lower value ones. You can see we've got one decibels, two decibel, and three decibel. If I turn these all on, that's six decibel of attenuation, which should be one S unit on the meter here. And you can see more or less that's what we've got. Let's continue on and see what happens. The next stage is 5 dB, which should be almost one S unit. Let's see if we lose another bar. And it looks like we did. Now we're up to 10 dB, we should lose at least one more bar. And in this case, it looks like we lost a few, but that could be just the way the radio is calibrated. I'm not sure. Now if I turn on the last one, which is 20 dB, we should lose the signal altogether. Now the radio is still receiving it to some degree, but there's no signal left. So this thing is doing what it's intended to do. Then you can see if I activate the master switch, that bypasses the attenuator altogether and the signal comes back. So this weather station is a little further away. You may be able to notice the signal is not quite full scale. Let's see what happens if I add in the 20 dB. You can see we can still hear the signal, but it's mostly gone. If I add 10, let's see if it disappears all the way. And it's more or less gone now. Just for fun, I think I'm going to connect up an HF radio and see what happens there. I've got my FT891 hooked up to my 80 meter dipole running through the attenuator here. I'm tuned to WWV at 10 megahertz, as you can see in here. I've got the radio in AM mode. Let's play with the attenuator here and see what we get. You can probably see that the signal is, I don't know, roughly half scale. There's a bit of fading there, so it's going to be a little hard to really get an accurate gauge, but we'll see what happens anyway. So I'll start at one decibel and I'll move my way up until I get to full attenuation. So as you can see in here, I was able to kind of null out most of WWV. It's very faintly still there on sort of the peaks as the signal fades in and out. But for the most part, it's gone. So now I'll run back through, turn off the attenuation, and we'll see what it sounds like. So I think that's going to wrap things up for the Pacific Antennas QRP Kits 41 decibel switched attenuator. So eventually I'd like to make a case for this thing. I don't have a 3D printer or anything on hand that this would fit in. So for now, I think this block of wood will serve the purpose and I'll be able to at least use it on my upcoming fox hunt. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.